Now, on the pro bodybuilding stage, he's the country's most well-muscled man. But behind closed doors, our next guest has struggled to stay strong. Darren Onikawa joins us on Diet and Fitness today to talk about how his family and the sport he loves helped him recover from mental illness. Good morning to you. Good morning. It is lovely to have you here. Now, I know you're a bit nervous. You don't need Very. to be because, uh, first of all, I have to say, your shirt is amazing. Where did this come from? Uh, it's a gift that I got from, uh, from my, my uh, daughter, so... I thought it would be appropriate to wear it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And she is going to be so proud. And I mean, that's not your stereotypical bodybuilding kind of a shirt, is it? A unicorn lifting weight? No, not really, but it's always a good way to get a bit of conversation going. So. Well, it's worked. Yeah, so absolutely. Worked. Yeah. And well done to your daughter because she's got excellent taste. <laughs> so when did you begin bodybuilding? Um, I was introduced to the sport at the age of 14, but I, I didn't do my first bodybuilding show until I was 17, so that was back in 1993, so it's quite a while ago. And it was something that you liked about it instantly? Yeah, well, when I first saw um, these physiques when I was 14, it really sort of resonated with me, and I found it quite amazing that a human body could look like that. Um, but I didn't actually start going to the gym until I was about 16 and a half, and... Uh, and that's when I really sort of got into it, and as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, yesterday. because when you're 14 and that too, everything's changing your body, and everything, you know, the sizes and everything, it must be quite a difficult time. So you have to wait till your body's a little bit more developed? Yeah, I, I suppose so. I mean, everyone's different, but mm -hmm. um, for me, I was just um, not ready to, to, to get started. And, and I did the other things that young yeah. you know, kids do at that age, sort of playing rugby and all the rest of it. So it was, yeah. Active 17. guy, we can see there on screen. So yeah. tell me about your achievements to date. Well, um, I've got a lot of, I've been in the sport since 93, so it's probably easier for me to sort of describe some of the most memorable moments. Good. But um, Otherwise we'll be here all Yeah, day. we'll probably <laughs> be here for a while, but um, I suppose the first event was in, nine, sorry, in 2009 when I won the New Zealand National Champs. That was a big moment for me, and uh, I, I won my, my pro card, which enabled me to compete in, as an IFBB pro. And... Um, but most most recently um, for me it was after being away from the sport for five years um, getting very overweight uh, I lost a uh, hundred pounds and got back on stage after a like I say, hiatus of, of five years, and I was able to compete in front of my family and my loved ones and friends, and most importantly, my daughter was there to be able to cheer me on. So it was a big moment that for me. That must have been a really special yeah. moment. So tell me about your struggle with depression. Well, it's uh, I've, I've thought about this, and the easiest way for me to describe it is that you know ev everyone's different in how they they deal with the situation, um, and I think it's important that we don't compare one person's situation to another because we're all unique. Um, for me personally, going through certain changes in my life, uh, I found myself becoming more um, reclusive and, and, and sort of keeping certain emotions sort of down inside me mm -hmm. and things like guilt and um, loneliness, sadness, a sense of a loss of um, self-worth, motivation. So um, I think that when anyone's faced with that sort of situation, you can start to view the world and through a different lens mm. and uh, it's, it's it's not as pleasant so it wasn't until I was able to sort of um, reach out and find that I was able to talk to other people about it that had been through similar situations that I was able to start to view the world mm. in, a, in a more positive lens. So what was the moment that you realised that you had to reach out? Because that's quite a moment to get to, isn't it? <sighs> yeah, I don't know if, if there was one particular event but I found myself talking to other guys that about things that were going on for me and they would be like oh bro this is what happened to me and mm -hmm. then we sort of started to sort of just talk and that was at that time that I felt that I realised that I wasn't alone you know I could reach out and talk to other people and that for me was you mm. know um, very, very, a really important thing. Because people expect you because you're physically strong to be mentally strong? Very much so unfortunately this um, <clears throat> the outward appearance can be somewhat um, Misleading, and because we, you know, um, no, no matter the size of the person, you know, we, we deal with um, things, you know, um, uniquely, and you know, uh, a person's heart is, you know, is, you know, as as soft and as tender as from one person to the next. So, you know, one's outward appearance doesn't necessarily represent how mm -hmm. they're going to deal with something emotionally. Obviously, bodybuilding is very, very important to you. How does it help you stay positive? I think most obviously it's being able to stay active, mm. you know, and we all know that, um, you know, physical activity is, is great for the mind, um, and that's how I do my form of therapy. I've got a great um, support network um, at, back in Rotorua, and uh, that's the way that I am able to sort of, um, I suppose, self-medicate in terms of therapy through training. Yes. Yeah. And do you have any 
final advice for people that are watching right now who maybe feel that they are struggling with depression? What Absolutely. Should they do? I think it's important just to be able to understand that you're not alone, um, to be able to find the courage to, to ask for help. Um, uh, you know, whoever that is, whether it's you know a family member, a friend, uh, whatever, it's just don't feel that you're isolated, that you can't talk about it because that's the worst thing that you could do. Um, so that would, be, would my message would be just to encourage anyone that's going through this to, to reach out and, and talk and ask for help. Awesome. Hey, well, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for chatting today, Darren. And if anything that we've discussed has struck a chord with you and you'd like to reach out for help, please call or text 1737 anytime for support from a trained counsellor or call Lifeline on 0800 54 33 54.